guys. Um, although I'm from Grab, whatever I present here is not Grab stuff. So, opinions here are only my own and does not reflect what Grab does in any in any way. I actually wanted to give this talk a month ago because uh, last month this this event was held at the Grab office and this office is very far from, from my office. So today I, I actually don't have a lot of slides. Okay. Well, yeah. Thing that, that everybody always rolls their eyes at when, when they talk about it. because you know having redux on native is just such a such a choke right? because everybody keeps saying that it's good and then we have a few implementations in native code that you know that's not so good I can say that so today what I'm going to do is introduce to you my own implementation and uh, this is the same concept I have for both Android and iOS. And slide-wise, let me just run this through this quickly. Okay, so why do we use Redux? So has anyone here worked in a front-end role with React before? Okay, so yes, so a few people. So you, you, sh you probably know what Redux is. And then have you ever checked out how Redux looks like on native code? Okay. Yeah. Basically, same concept. So, um, over the years, I've, I've tried my hands on a bunch of uh, architectures. So, MVVM, MVP, Viper, all that. And they are, in my opinion, none of them are good. Because you do too much for too little. So, everybody here knows MVC is not good. But what is the alternative? Uh, the reason why I'm, I say that the other architectures are not good is because um, in their case, you're doing, you're having so many layers, so many boiler plates for admittedly pretty limited gains. So with Redux, what you can do is that you're, you're only going to have two layers. So you're going to have view and you're going to have logic, that's all. And they're going, going to be completely decoupled from each other. And since it is a unidirectional flow, it is infinitely extensible. That means you can follow through with your uh, close for modification, open for extension, uh, you know, all those solid principles. So uh, I always like presenting with whiteboard. So for for anyone who doesn't know what Redux is, basically it has three components. Basically, it's just simple public pops up. Yes. So now we have a store. The store here will contain a global state. And then we have our global state. And then we have our new. So what Redux says is that in your view, what you can do, you can send actions to the store. Let's say I send an action called add one. Okay? But you don't specify how it's done. I'm not going to recommend how that one is done with the action. The second piece of the the second piece of the puzzle is something called a reducer. A, re a reducer is a pure function that takes the previous state and the latest action and reduce into a new state. So let's say uh, let's say my state has the shape of uh, value and this value is an integer. And then what my reducer says is that every time I receive add one, I increment in this value by one. So since reducers are pure functions, you can test these very easily, and then the resulting state always has to be immutable. So I mean, you, you should not modify global state like uh, with non-immutable. So it always has to be immutable, so that you don't have you have predictable state um, containers. 
And then after that, since the view has a subscription to the store, every time the state changes, the view will receive the state change. Yes. So does, does, does everyone get this concept? It's very simple, it's only three components. So it's like a, like a merry-go-round. So a view set an action, the store receives the action and reduce it to the new state, set the state inside the global storage, and then the, we, we send, we broadcast the new state to the view. So it's like one round like this. And uh, I think you'll see the beauty of it in a while. And it does basically, does, I mean, that's all my slides. I don't have anything else. So what I'm going to do here is a very simple app. Everybody does. How do I make this smaller? Okay, so in this app, what I do here is that I will have one view controller and one table view. That's all. What I'm going to do, every time I click on search iTunes, it's going to search the iTunes store for the, the uh, music files with matching name. And here, there's no logic yet because you see, no matter how many times I write and whatever I write, uh, the table view doesn't change the content. So let's go. The first benefit of this library is that it has automatic subscription. So if, if you have ever looked at uh, current implementation like uh, RE Swift, so what they do is that they will have a singleton store, and that is not different from a notification center. But what I what I will provide you with is automatic subscription to the state. Let's say um, the iTunes controller, yes. And this is the class that is going to host the, the table view. And then I will have the autocomplete input the progress indicator. And the progress indicator is going to be on this on this thing over here. And you can't see it yet because I don't have any logic. I have the result table. The result table is going to present whatever search results that I have. Yes. And these are constraints. Uh, it's not too important. So the first thing I do is that I will implement two interfaces. First thing. So as I mentioned just now, every time the state changes, you will receive the update. But you are not going to have the whole set in the, in the container because you don't want to duplicate that because if, if let's say you have a very big global state if you duplicate that global state in every view controller and every view your app memory usage is going to be huge so firstly what you would implement is a prop mapper type I would call Redux prop a prop a, you know a prop type a prop type contains two things State and action. The state is something like you know value value integer. The action will be something like increment value or something. Yes. So the global state here, I will map from this global state to the local state, which is where I will implement my second protocol. Yes. So this is the local state of this view controller. I I want to see that I I want to have the view controller to have the latest input, the result count, because I, I need to implement a uh, number of rows in section, the result count, and then whether or not uh, we are loading data so that I, I want to display the progress. Yes, and then for in terms of the action, I want to have only one action, which is update automatic input. So that every time I type here, it will send an action to the, to the store that, okay, I want to update the, the input to this one. Can you update it and then do an API fetch? Okay. And then you're going to have to unblock all these. So when, when you implement these two protocols, you need to add these two properties. These are, these are two properties that, that, require, that, that are required for every view. And static props, I'll explain the static prop later, but let's go to Redux prop. So in Redux prop, it will contain the latest state and the latest action. So I say when when I call it set, and I will I will map it uh, I will call it set prop. 
here, and then you see that state plot will contain the state, and then uh, every time I receive the state, I will update my automatic input and result table and everything. So is it still failing? Okay, compilation still fails. Oh. So in my okay, so as you can see here, this is a global state. The global state will have the autocomplete input, autocomplete progress, and the item results. Autocomplete input is whatever I put here. Yes. Auto, uh, autocomplete progress will control the behavior of this progress, and the item results will control the data that we present in this table. And these, these are just helper methods to help me um, change the state without mutating it. So, as you can see here, every time I mutate the state, I'll just return a new state instead of having a mutating found. And this will be all the actions that we need. So we need three actions. Update autocomplete input, update autocomplete progress, and update item results. So based, based on the diagram that I should just showed you on the whiteboard, every time we send up update autocomplete input, it is going to send an action to the store that, okay, I just type these values into my input field. Please update the global store with these input fields. Let's see. Does it work? Does it work? Okay, succeed now. And one more thing, you need to actually, you know, initialize the store. So in, in this app, I'm doing something very simple. All I'm doing is that I have a navigation controller that controls this iTunes controller, uh, iTunes view controller. And then, okay, and this is going to be our reducer. So, as, as I mentioned just now, the, re, the, re, uh, the reducer will take the previous state, which is, which is the first parameter, take the latest action, the second parameter, to produce a new state. And then you see here, all the state mutation that we need to do here are very predictable. Let's say, if I receive autocomplete, update autocomplete input, I will update the state with that input and everything else. So, so that, that's why I said that having uh, the app reducer being a pure function is very easy to test. Because all you have to do is just to provide some mock state and provide any, of, any one of these outputs and you need to check whether the resulting state matches you know, this, uh, this result. Does this work now? So let's see. But you cannot have automatic injection without a price. So the price here is that you're going to have to intercept your navigation controller with this code. So in the navigation controller delegate, there's a method called real show view controller. And for all the child controllers that go through this navigation controller, I will, I will have access to that view controller here. And then I will do a prop, in, prop injector is, is something that helps you handle all the subscription. And inject props into this controller. And then after a call inject props, this iTunes controller will already have an automatic subscription. So all these will be set up and then let's see whether oh. Okay, so so like the so if you have used Rx Swift before, so this is the same behavior as a behavior subject, which means the first time you subscribe to the store, you receive the the latest state. So this is to to ensure that all new subscriber will have the latest state, you know, right from the start, in case they don't receive any other state from then onwards. So that's why. When, when I call here, you see the breakpoint being reached, uh, and then how do we print all these out? Action props, and then you will see that this is nil because the the first state there's nothing there yet. So let's go on. Okay, let me type something. It's not oh yeah, I need to. Okay, so I also need to add an ID action to, to, uh, to check for value changes. 
So in the IBM action, this is where the Redux prop action come, comes into play. So what you do here is that you call this update auto complete input, which is an action that we map here. So when you map the action, what you do is you have access to the global dispatcher. You will dispatch the action. You would, because the update auto complete input is a, is a function, what you would do is you, you would dispatch the relevant action to that specific interaction. Okay. Accepted, first time. Second time. Yes. So after you, you type you type something here, it gets registered, you know, it gets delivered to the store, and then the subscription kicks in and delivers you the new value. Okay. Let's just so when you type everything here, even though it appears as if nothing is being done, but it, it is actually setting the autocomplete input text to whatever that you are typing. So in, in red, we call this a controlled input, but uh, we don't have such concepts in iOS. So this is, this is just for demonstration. But I mean, if, if it stops, it simply stops here, then it's nothing different from, you know, uh, a simple pops up. So the, the power of this library comes into the fact that it, it allows you to do asynchronous work very easily. And without you having to handle threat uh, by yourself. Whenever props get received in, in a view, it will always be delivered on the main thread. But whatever, basic, uh, whatever work that you do asynchronously will always be in a different thread from the main thread. So that's why you see here, none of these like, methods have any kind of dispatch queue, dispatch, uh, dispatch queue dot something dispatch to them. So during the test, what you can do here, you test it as if it's normal. So let's say you create an items controller, and then you, you set the Redux prop to, what, to whatever you want. Let's say a mock prop, and then you verify that the view uh, you know, reflect that change. So that's why in the previous slide I mentioned that this framework does not try to fight um, the uh, UI changes. In other frameworks like Viper or Rips by Uber, they, they do so many things to try to fight back. But in my case, I'm saying that you don't need to fight it, just extend it. Do not try to fight, fight Apple because you will always be behind the game. So. Let's go on to the God, okay. let's go on to asynchronous work. So um, for now, whatever asynchronous work that's been done here is just a wrapper over Rx Swift, nothing more than that. And wrap it so that it works with a store subscription. So if you see this diagram, it is a circle right? because it's a unidirectional data flow, which makes it perfect for you to intercept the action. Let's say I, I send action to store. I have something outside. I have some, like maybe another thread, another concurrent thread. I will intercept that action. I will intercept the action. Let's say, in my case, I will intercept the set query. Set query here is set search query. I intercept, I intercept the action, I do API call, and then, after I do an API call, I get the results back. I set back to the store. So, after I do the API call, I, I set the results back to the store. This one trigger again, and go back to the view. So, in, in this case, what I'm trying to do is that every time I type into a input field, I am going to perform a, a, a search, a, a search for music on Apple Store. After I get the results back, I will deliver that result to the global state, to the global state, and that global state will send the result back to my view controller. Okay, let me demonstrate. So this is a concept called Redux Saga. Uh, Redux Saga is quite a popular, quite a popular library in React, but we don't have anything like that in Swift. Let's uncomment all of this. Okay, for the first sight, I don't think anybody understands what is going on, but you see. Okay, um. okay give me a minute, let me type something. Okay. 
guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So, so I, I took this concept from firstly from React, but secondly from Express.js. So in Express, what you can do is you can specify the middlewares to intercept the request and the response. In in this case, what we're doing is the same. So we can enhance the base store with middlewares. So what I mean by that? So every time the, the middleware, what it does, it can intercept actions. Every time you send an action, the middleware has access to it. That is why we have something called a Saga middleware to perform these asynchronous actions, uh, asynchronous work. So you can, uh, the name Saga doesn't really mean anything. You can consider it like a concurrent thread. So this is the concurrent thread model built on RxSwift. Okay, so let's go to Asana. Let's say, has anyone used like Rx Swift before? Like, very prominent, like very proficient here. So, in tech latest, this is a, a Redux Saga operator. In tech latest, the same concept as Flatmap latest. So, what it does is that it will it will give you a Rx Swift subscription. Let's say every time I I uh, receive the action call like uh, okay. Every time I receive the, the action update auto complete input, which in this case what we do to update the input in the store, I will trigger this block, this auto complete SADA block. Okay, and the auto complete SADA is like this. So if you if you but don't don't mind don't mind the mumbo jumbo, but if you follow the logic, it's very simple. Firstly, what we do is that we update the auto complete progress to true, so that we display a progress bar in the items controller. Secondly, we call the search items API with the core operator. And then thirdly, if, so I mean in this case you have very simple do catch instead of the RxSwift operators. Like, uh, I mean it's very, very complicated. So, so for people who are more comfortable with, with in, uh, imperative programming, so what you do is that you just do exactly as you would uh, otherwise, you know, you just specify like, okay, I'm calling, I'm calling an API here, search items, and then if I get the results back, I put it back to the store with the action called update item results. The action update item result will reduce the store to include the new item results. Okay, and finally, I do a catch here because I want to say that, okay, here, here you can have some Sara to handle the errors, but now I don't have it yet. And then, no matter what, I want to hide the progress bar. So it's like a try catch finally in Java. Okay, so now we have this autocomplete Java setup, and all our logic is done. Okay, so let's see how it's how it's being. Okay. Uh, yeah, I also need to uncomment this. Remember, in our internal state, we have a few called result count. It just shows you like how many results are they actually that we got from API search. Okay. Okay, you see this? Okay, the reason why you see track name label with this everything, because I have not actually injected the subscription into the table cell. But you see that it's, it's working. It's working. So let's say I have nonsensical input, you give you give me nothing like right? Like uh Oh, I think it's because because I haven't injected that's why I'm struggling there. Okay. But let's say uh, let me put a break point there.
Yes. So now you see that I'm calling this. You put a bit on here as well. Calling this. Now so now I see I'm calling this. Okay, now I received the results. Now if you want to see what the tracks look like, let's try to eject in the cell as well. So exactly the same thing, you implement two two protocols. You implement two protocols and then you have all these because prompt and everything. So let's let's go through this a bit. So in this state prop for the cell, all I want to have is firstly the IP track. Because the iTunes track will have we have the name and the artist name. And then in action prompts, I want to have an action called show preview. I don't care what the implementation is. All I want to know is that when I click on that cell, I want I want the app to show me the preview of the song. But we are not going to implement that here first. So this is where so remember just now I was saying that I'm going to explain on this a bit further. This is where we're going to use static prompts. Because the static prompts have a reference to the global injector. So, uh, okay, so static prompts have a uh, reference to the global injector. So the injector is the one that manages the store subscription for you. So what you do is, when you call self roll app, I mean this is, all you gotta do is this. So you inject prompts. So in this case, uh, the kind of view, view hierarchy you're doing is very simple. Parent to child, always the case. Navigation controller will control, will help inject props into view controller. View controllers will inject props into whatever children that's interested in the global state. Okay, let's do that. Uh, you see a bunch of uh, bunch of stuff. Okay, so now you see that with just a few steps, I, I received the item results in the table set. So why do I say that this, this is much simpler than MVP and MVP for or whatever? Because if you see here, for the views, you don't actually know what is going on. You don't actually know what, what is the work that's being done. Everything here is view only. All you know, all you know is that when you when have you interact with the with the app, it's sending something, it's doing something, but you don't know what it is. So let's say update output of the input, it will be specified when I actually inject the prompts. But you see here all the methods here are static, so that means you can unit test this, and then all uh, what you can do in unit test for for view controller is that you provide mock implementation of these actions. And then you 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 know you verify that these will caught when I tap uh, when when I type into the input. So the logic is completely decoupled from the view. So that's why you don't need anything like you know view model or model or anything like that. And that's it. I mean we have nothing that, but let's let's not stop there. Um, there's one more thing which is. Okay, so I have covered automated subscription, asynchronous work. Okay, how about routing and navigation? It's the same concept. We have access to we have access to middleware. Let's create a router middleware. Should have just commented it out instead of being so choice. Okay, so the router middleware will accept a router instant. Now you see here, the app router will implement an, uh, a protocol called Redux Router Type, and then it, that means you need to specify a method called Navigate. So this is a very simple uh, router implementation. I'll have a bit more complicated router implementation for you to to handle nested routing, but that is not the scope of this talk. So in this case, this router simply accepts the navigation controller, which is, you know, is respond, is, is able to push and pop the view controllers. Say, um, when I receive the screen, what I want is, I want to do something. Let's say, I don't have any other screen other, other from the iTunes server. 
But let's say uh, in the show preview action in the cell that I showed just now, I want to, I want to navigate to an external website to uh, you know show preview of the song that I just selected. So I will send an action. I will send a screen action. So the base action is different, but the screen action extends for the action, and it will be caught by this router. So I send the screen action called external URL. I mean, this is an email. So and then you have the URL string, and you do all, all your uh, you know uh, UI application stuff. So it's the same concept because the router middleware has access to all the actions in your pipeline. So what you do is, let's say in the where's the cell? Okay, I didn't check sure. cell. Okay, so here, you what you're doing is that you call show preview and you when you tap on cell because this is an IV action, and then in action prop show preview will dispatch external URL, and then since you have access to the track, uh, the track will have the pre preview URL, and let's run this. And with oh, I was okay. Okay, uh, kind of a bunch of stuff is I forgot to do. Okay, let's say when I click here, it will go to another another screen. So, no matter how deep your view is, you can control the navigation. So that's the beauty of it because. Is a unidirectional flow and it's infinitely extensible. Let's say you have very complicated logic that, that you want you don't want to modify your exist, existing classes. Um, we have a few use cases for that. Let's say I have uh, in in the Sana this logic that search the search the store, but I want to have like additional logic to, to lock whatever input that I, that I search. All I need to do is that add another Sana. Add another server. Catch the same action. Uh, I mean, imagine this is the, the, the API to log. Catch the same action, and then do your API. So you don't need to modify this. You don't need to modify this logic to cater to logging. Okay. It will be all actions that are in your pipeline will be delivered to all your servers. And your your sadas will can specify which action is interested in. You want to have more stuff to do? Okay, just write another stuff down because it's very lightweight. You write another sada to handle that logic. You don't need to extend your existing method. Write a test for it. Very simple test. The way we write tests is that we verify that this sequence of action happened, but we don't care what is happening. Let's say I want to test auto uh, auto commit sada. I will provide a mock implementation of the app repository. I'll provide a query, and then I'll verify that, okay, firstly, there was a put effect, and then there was a call effect, and there was another put, and then finally, one put. So put, call, put, put. But since you don't need to specify what it actually does, all you're doing is that you're just verifying, verifying that this sequence happened. Let's say in the test, you uh, let's say here you you want to have some logic to handle the error. So in the test, you mock the error, and then you verify that okay, this action was called, but these two was not called. If there was an error, and then this was called. So, which makes all your logic to be very unit in the sense the smallest that it can be. Very easy to test, and then I mean the views are easy to test because the view has no idea what is going on. The view just receives the prompts. Yes. So uh, this is a very shallow example because it feels like you know you know things like this always looks good for small apps. But what what about big apps? So the way you write big apps is that you know you would have lifecycle control. Let's say um, every time I, I mean for Grab for example, Grab is a huge app, it has a lot of like different screens, a lot of different verticals like transport and food. Yeah. Let's say every time I go to the transport screen, fire up all these sagas for me. But every time I leave the transport screen, kill all of them. 
so that you, you control your resources properly. And then um, I, will, I have another concept, but I don't know whether the time permits, which is called the nested router. But uh, I think if anyone is interested, you can you can talk to me later. So, uh, okay. So automatic subscription, routing, and navigation, asynchronous work, what else? Track management, you know, life cycle management. You don't need to ma manage the life cycle of your subscription because it will always be automatically unsubscribe every time your view controller or view is deinitialized. So you don't, as long as the moment you, you, you call inject, nothing else you need to do, just react to whatever stuff that, that arrives to you. So this is a functional, reactive functional programming. Yes. So you just react to whatever stuff comes to you. You don't do anything. Um, if you have user interaction, call an action that you don't know the implementation of. So the view is completely dark, and then you don't need to fight the Coco framework at all. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so that's that's already the end. But uh, I wanted to say a few more things. So if you are like a full stack developer, so this is uh, the report I was talking about, and uh, this is this is my GitHub. And I have also in, um, provided the implementation for Kotlin and for Android. Uh, this one, you see the commit, the commit count is much more than Swift because on Android it's a lot, a lot more complicated to, to, to do simple things. Yes, so if you feel like, I mean, you can try it out. You, if you want to do both Android and iOS, you can try both these libraries. They work exactly the same way. So let's say this is my this is my thing, um, and this example is the same as oh, what's this? oh yeah, this is the preview screen. Okay, a, a bit more complicated because I I have the fetch limit. Let's see. Okay, I have the progress, and then I have the results. When I click here, it will go to the results screen. A bit more complicated because when you click on the iOS app, you just go to a, to a web queue. But here I have a bit more logic there. And then a bunch of other sample apps that you may want to check out if you do both Android and iOS. And yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Um, I can assure you that uh, you may think that you know this may, be, may fit for simple two apps, but that's, that is not the case. We have built huge React apps based on Redux and there's no reason for it not to work here. But you need to, to manage your your separation of concerns properly. Let's say there's a global state, don't put everything in a global state. If anything that you can make local, make it local. The global state should be for sharing between two views. Okay. So because the problem with all you know the problem that every architecture tries to solve is how to communicate between two components that don't know each other. In this way, in this way, I have provided a good way to do that, but it is not the only answer. So if you feel like you know it's too complicated for you, personally, I don't feel that's complicated because you know the there's there's no other layers that you need to do assigned to this. It's just logic in the view and full separation of concern. But you you may feel that you know other architectures are more more your thing, maybe Viper and MVVM, but you know I've tried all of them and none of them feel that it's productive, you know. It's not productive to me because I need to do so much quality to the point that, uh, I mean, it's not an Android talk, but I can go, you know, a lot of things are frustrated on Android, but on, on, on iOS I think it's a bit better because you don't need to do so many unnecessary things to achieve, achieve something so simple. But yeah, so if you feel like uh, you want to check it out, um, just go to this. So my, this is my, my GitHub page. For a man like you know, rest to be here. But uh, and you see, I pin these two libraries here. All that use I took in as as the underlying implementation. So to be honest, I don't think there's there's anything novel that I'm doing. So all I'm doing is that I'm taking a concept that already exists in front end. 
I take another concept that already exists on iOS, which is i Just combine them together and, and make the implementation as close to the original Redux as possible. So this is the closest that you can get to original Redux. All the other implementation, you will not get it. Because let's say for RE Swift, or then, then you will need to do something like, uh, so if you do load, let's, let's imagine this is you load, you're gonna have to do something like store, dot subscribe. In which case, the store here is like a signature, which defeats the entire purpose of the dependency injection. So, in other implementation, it's just a simple pops up, but what I'm offering here is a full framework. Everything's handled for you, but as long as you know how to do the right thing, I don't think you, you can ever go wrong. Yeah, so that's, that's it, I guess. Any questions? So just now you were saying that you were a very big fan of Google Word, but uh, it was like, how do you stick? Because the, just now, everything is in play now, all the stages. There was a part where you mentioned that something will be aware of all the actions in your app. Yeah. And then, on the, uh, sorry, um, the questions will be left after the, uh, the entire event is done. Yeah, you can always approach the speaker. Uh, okay, anyway, yeah, I, I get what you mean. So maybe yeah, we're running short of time, so we can show do it. Like just another two minutes. Yeah. That's <laughs> organized. Uh yes, because we are ready. Okay, you yeah, get very short. Two, two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. Okay. So so how how you do this kind of splitting on both Android and iOS is with okay, so Android on Android you do dagger, but iOS you do something like needle, needle for Google. So it's the same thing. Because let's say Saga effects dot take latest is actually a, a flat map latest. So what you can do is that every time you enter a screen, let's say your your business have three big screens. For Grab, we have the transport screen, we have the food screen, we have whatever other screens. And let's say when I enter here, I set an initialize action. Okay. After I send initialize, fire up, help me fire up all the related Saga. And then when I exit that screen, send a deinitialize action, okay, to kill all those saga. So that that is how you can split the, the modules into different. I mean, I've, I've tried it with uh, not not here, but in grab, but but I mean, it's all confidential information. I think can share. Yeah. So um. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions, just yeah, feel free to contact me. I mean, I have I have studied this a lot, and then uh, on it works on both Android and iOS. The same concept. So as long as you handle the, the dependency injection properly, anything can be done. This is just something simple for you to play with. Yes, but if you have a big apps, your concern does not lie with you know this kind of you know this kind of small small thing. Your concern will lie with how you separate the concern and how you communicate between your business verticals. So your question will, will be much bigger than this. But there's a way to handle with this framework, which you know, if you're interested later, I can share. Okay. All right. Uh, that's it. Uh, let's give uh, here a round of applause. Okay. Uh,